Hello, all of you beautiful beings, and welcome to the show. I'm Lane Smith Brown, and this is episode number 29 of the Unleash Your Life podcast. And today we're going to have a talk about how we are always in the right place. We're right on time, and there are an unlimited amount of do overs when you do the work we're talking about on this show. This is the Unleash Your Life podcast, where you're going to learn to rewild yourself. I'm your host, Lane Smith-Brown, and I'm a best-selling author and rewilding guide. And over the last 20 years, I've been guiding women back to their truest selves. You see, you were born wild with all the wisdom you will ever need to navigate your life in a beautiful and powerful way. Then, just like everyone else on the planet, you got tamed as you fell under the power and influence of others who were also tamed. All that taming you got as a kid has you convinced you are less powerful than you really are. I call all of that unconscious programming power leaks. And on this show, you're going to discover yours and then you're going to choose to plug them so you can get back to the wild, wise and powerful being that you are. So grab a coffee, glass of wine, or a favorite friend, or all three, and let's talk about what living your wild self can mean for you. All right, welcome back to the show. I love that you're here. Whether you've listened to all the shows already or this is your first one, welcome here. This one may be a little bit longer than some, so I'm going to dive right in. I hope that that title got your juices going because grace is a lovely thing to offer ourselves whenever we can. I've been watching someone drown for the last few months, struggling for air, gasping, hands flailing. Now, don't think I'm being cruel in watching this process. There's a life raft well within reach and near as I can tell, she's choosing not to grab hold. I mean no judgment in what I'm saying because I know I could be completely wrong. It's just what it looks like to me. But her process is her process. Just as my process is my process and your process is your process. And it can change on a dime depending on what we're working on and how deep the stories go. All I can do for her right now is hold her in the light and see her succeeding on her journey, whatever that looks like for her. Perhaps it's a version of you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make her drink, or it's just another way of doing things. Where I got to in trying to figure out my role in all of this, if I have one at all, is simply to remember that this work is messy. It's the least linear path we'll ever take. And there are limitless amounts of do-overs, limitless amounts of grace. And her journey also reminds me of my own. So let's dissect this process of process. You've likely heard that we can have both physiological and psychological addictions to our power leaks. On a physiological level, being in a fight or flight response pretty much anything where you're not in a peaceful state of mind, your body is producing and releasing noroephrine and epinephrine and cortisol. Norepinephrine and epinephrine both increase your blood sugar levels and heart rate. Noropinephrine has the added bonus of narrowing your blood vessels which increases your blood pressure. Doesn't that sound like a lot of stress on your system? What do you think the long-term effects are of those chemicals running constantly through your body? Especially since your body is only built to handle those chemicals very seldom and for very short periods of time. When you can get yourself into more peaceful states, your body produces dopamine and serotonin, 
Dopamine is known as the happy hormone and is associated with all kinds of pleasurable sensations. Serotonin gives you feelings of overall well-being, allows both sides of your brain to communicate with each other, and also helps with sleeping and digestion. Now, those are very simplified descriptors, and if you're interested, there's all kinds of information available to you, of course, if you want to dig in. But it's enough for me to move forward right now. As odd as it may seem, when you've had norepinephrine and epinephrine coursing through your body, you get used to it. Not used to it in as like your body adapts or benefits in any kind of way, but just used to feeling crappy. It's just the way you feel. It's like if you are used to eating a diet of fried foods and snacks, you just grow accustomed to feeling heavy and lethargic. You will grow accustomed to how your body and your skin looks and feels. You get used to something less than optimal health. When you start eating fresh foods, you may crave the fried foods and snacks, but there comes a tipping point where your body craves the whole fresh food more. And when you go back to the fried foods and snacks, at that point, your body will have a much more intensely negative response to it because it now understands what healthy food feels like. Does that make sense? So what are the clues that your thoughts and emotions are more in the category of fried foods and snacks? Well, have you grown accustomed to a relationship that is not what you want, but you're doing nothing about it? Or how about your finances? You've just grown accustomed to the lack of it and the drama that's, that, that state ignites. What about your sense of worth and value? Have you gotten used to being unsure of yourself? Constantly putting yourself down before anyone else gets a chance to do so? And what about the opportunities you think are available to you? If you're in the camp of this is as good as it gets, you're still eating junk food, emotionally speaking. In this state, you choose the quick fix of lies and deceptions over truth and direction. And the only one you're lying to is yourself. It's not so different than watching an addict consistently choosing a drink, a pill, or a needle, is it? If you've had an addict in your life and you, uh, you get to a point where you understand at a very deep level that they need to choose life, you cannot choose life for them. Addictions to our power leaks are every bit as real. Our egoic brain helps to create all kinds of physical reactions and dependencies that make letting them go feel far more dangerous than staying stuck. You grow accustomed to the chaos and you become convinced that it feels comfortable. <laughs> the ego is so sneaky that way. As you look around you, and you see failed relationship after failed relationship, a bank account that never seems to be enough to pay the bills or to get ahead, a body that feels more neglected than loved, friends who take more than they give. All of that information contains clues that you are more addicted to your pain than you are addicted to the promise of peace. In order to move forward, something has to break. Something has to change. You have to begin choosing the healthy whole food over the deep fried junk. Usually, the only thing that moves us to choose the pain of change over the pain of staying the same is one honest moment. This tiny little window where you can see that what you are doing and how you are being is not getting you the life you desire. 
It can begin with a question like, if I stay on this course, where will I be in six months, in a year, in two years? What will stay the same? What things will be better if I stay on this course? And what things are going to be worse? If I can recognize that my relationships, my love life, my sense of self-worth, my finances, or my health are not where I want them to be right now, am I also capable of making the connection that I am responsible for those conditions? That's a tough one. If you've been blaming your past, your parents, your past, your priest, or politicians, but it doesn't make it any less true. Let's take blame and shame for a moment. You want something better for your future. Tell me how staying in blame gets you there. You want to change your life. You want to experience more of what you love. How does staying in the energy of shame move you forward? If you can, don't get distracted on whether the cause of your shame and blame are justified. Keep yourself in the questions of does staying in shame or blame move me forward in my life? Are there solutions in shame or blame? Is there relief in shame or blame? Is there any positive emotional movement forward in shame or blame? Look, disconnected people do shitty things to other people. That's just a fact of life. There's a good chance that disconnected people did shitty things to you. But if you stay in thoughts and emotions of shame and blame, you end up doing shitty things to yourself. That's where crappy relationships, crappy health, crappy money, and crappy everything comes from. You unconsciously create more things to feel shame and blame about. Now, don't think this is just about shame or blame. It could be about constantly needing to be disappointed because if you had one word to describe your childhood, that would be it, disappointed. And that could also easily be anger, angst, or agitation. It could be doubt, despair, or disconnection. It's however you would describe the overall energetic signature of your early life. That will become your go-to emotion. Give me a second here. I want you to try an experiment right now. It doesn't matter what you're doing. I just want you to stop and very deliberately start to smile. Seriously, stop and purposefully raise the corners on both sides of your mouth. Give you a couple of seconds and just feel that. Are you doing it? Now, be honest. Did you feel a change in how you were feeling? Was it a negative change or a positive change? Do you feel heavier or lighter? I've not met anyone yet who didn't experience an emotional lift doing this exercise. It works for me all the time. Now, I'm not telling you to put a fake smile on your face when you're in pain. All I'm trying to show you is that there is an emotional bump that happens when you move out of the shitty feelings you've grown accustomed to. And when you do something like focus on happy memories, happy dreams, happy desires, whatever happy looks like and feels like to you, you change. You feel something different. Do you feel me? Here's the deal. If all it took to improve your life, your relationships, your finances, your sense of personal power or feelings of opportunity was to read a book, listen to a lecture or take a course, 
everyone who does or did any of those things would be dancing around without a care in the world. No one gets rich reading a book on how to get rich. No one gets fit reading a book on how to get fit. No one improves their relationships reading a book on how to improve your relationships. Action is required. You need to put yourself on a different path in a different energy with different habits to become what you desire. Action. So what are the familiar things you're surrounded by right now that you no longer desire? There's something, isn't there? Is it about you or someone in your life? Is it about your work, your home? What came to mind? Where are you sabotaging yourself? Where do you keep getting results you don't want? I can't tell you what you're getting from it, but you're getting something. Perhaps it gives you an excuse of some kind or it justifies you in some way or it allows others to feel sorry for you so you can suck on that sympathy for a while. For some, the need to be right outweighs the desire to feel at peace. You'd rather feel all that crappy, stay stuck kind of energy instead of the freedom of letting it go and moving on. That's the pride that'll kill you by sucking the life right out of you. Personally, I'd rather have the kind of pride associated with doing what it takes to get free of all that stuff. But that's just me. So the kind of change I'm asking of you here will likely need to come from a logical decision of declaring that if I hold on to this blame shame, resentment, anger, whatever the name of your pain is, as long as I hold on to this thing, I cannot grab hold of something better for myself. I need to let go of this excuse or I'm going to die. All right, you're still listening. Something is resonating. So what has to change? You've just realized you're eating junk food and you feel like shit. Are you going to grab more chips or a fresh glass of water? If you choose life, if you choose freedom, if you choose peace, then the work begins. The old stuff is going to keep calling you back because your ego does not like change. It's going to go through every excuse out there. And those excuses will be compelling. And if you give in and go back, well, you just need to begin again. Oh, a bag of Oreos, cream puffs, or fried chicken would be so good right now, wouldn't it? Just one. (laughs) Look, in my experience, the more you turn those self-sabotaging thoughts around, the more you will feel uh, a new normal, a new set point, and the new way of feeling and being in the world. And it will smack of peace. But you have to do the work. You have to get to the point where staying in the unhealthy behavior is more painful than moving forward. Now, this might be helpful to know. It was certainly helpful for me to understand You get a million do-overs. It's never too late. You're never too old. You're never undeserving. You can't reach your limit. If you go back to sabotaging your life with power leaks, simply notice it and choose something else. If you use the slip up to beat yourself up, you'll make the turnaround take longer. Just say your version of oopsie to yourself and get back to moving yourself in the new direction. For me, I found a tremendous relief in finding humor with it all. 
Um, sometimes I sing that uh, Oops, I Did It Again song. I can't remember who did that, but it lightens things up rather nicely. All right. So can you think of a plot line you need to change in your life in order to create a new story for yourself? Do you need to forgive some disconnected person who did some really disconnected stuff to you or someone you love? Do you need to spend time being thankful for what you have instead of mourning what you lost? Do you need to simply say, I'm sorry to yourself or someone else? And ask for a do-over, a new beginning, a clean slate. Remember, sometimes our pride will take a beating. We might feel embarrassment or failure or shame. But that's only shit talk from your ego. What you're really doing here is clearing out all of the old thoughts and behaviors so you can heal. Let me give you another way to see this. Picture a big white wall in front of you. Let's say it's uh, 40 feet wide by 20 feet tall. And you're standing about 10 inches away from it. You're facing forward. You have a marker in your hand. And you're going to draw a dot, a small dot, in front of your nose on the paper. Now, without moving back, I want you to draw an imaginary circle around that dot as big as you can make it and still see it. The circle around that dot represents all you can see for yourself right now. That's it for possibility. The circle is the limit of what you can believe is possible in your life right now. Each power leak that you are willing to let go of moves you a little further away from that wall. So you can now draw a bigger circle, more possibility for you to believe in. And another step back and the circle gets bigger. Until what is in your sight lines becomes limitless. At that point, you've gotten rid of all the stuff that's been holding you in your pain and you're free to live as you intended. Can you see that? Can you feel that? Do you want that? While you start changing your beliefs and letting go of the lies, you'll need to keep reminding yourself that you're letting go of beliefs that haven't been serving you, and you're letting go of lies that have been holding you stuck or drifting. We forget sometimes how long our indoctrination took. It took as long as the age you are right now. 20, 30, 40, 50. Yep. It's going to take some time and effort to undo, to unlearn all of that. But not nearly as long as it took you to get here. And the more times you do it, the easier it will become. You've got to give yourself a ton of credit that you didn't turn this podcast off by now. You're still listening. So what does that mean? Does that mean this is resonating with you? You can feel it, hear it. Maybe you can even taste the truth of it. I'd be willing to bet you do. Then let's get going. It's never too late. In fact, you're right on time. You've got the rest of your life to move in the direction of your desires, and you're ready. You get as many do-overs as you require. Just keep picking yourself up, dusting yourself off, and press on. What you seek is seeking you. That's a line by the poet Rumi, who lived back in the 13th century. I believe he understood that there is something out there that we have access to, that longs for us as much as we long for it. And as we make an attempt to move towards it by getting rid of our power leaks, it moves towards us. 
You see, it minds its own business until you initiate the quest. It's your decision every time. This work is never about denying your feelings. This work is about learning to move through your feelings so that you can get the lesson and move on. If something traumatic is happening to you right now in this moment, seek help. But if you're in a habit of thinking, then you now have the tools to move on. Remember the smiling face exercise from the beginning. When you're caught in the habit, the self-sabotaging thought patterns, change your state of mind with that simple tool. Turn up the corners of your mouth until you're in a full smile and bask in the relief of taking back control of your subconscious mind. What do you long for in this life? What are you willing to let go of in order to enter into that union? Well, that's a lot to think about, isn't it? But you've got some great tools and questions to help you out until we meet again. That's going to be it for this one. Thanks for being here. I love that you stayed until the end and I love that you keep coming back. Meet me back here for another conversation next time. Until then, stay weird, stay curious, and keep popping your corks or plugging your power leaks, whichever analogy floats your boat. And if that reference was lost on you, go back to episode 9 and 10. Ta for now, beautiful beings. We'll see you next time. Well, I hope this show rocked your world a little bit. If you want additional resources, check out the links in the show notes or at lanesmithbrown.com. Before you go, please subscribe to this podcast. It's how we get these tools into the world. And this world needs more wild women standing in their authentic power. Do that for me, will ya? Thank you.